Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to Age of Wealth Network, and I'm Dr. Hank, and you know what we do here. We help you, real estate agents and brokers, to increase your business and increase your wealth. And today, you know, every week, we have somebody that is just fascinating that can help us in some way, and this week, it's really a special week. Because first of all, we have an angel on with us, and it's Chris Angel. And Chris, hello. Hello, hello. Yes, thanks for having me. <laughs> thanks for being on the show. And uh, what I love what you do is you really provide an alternative uh, to cold calling. And I've never really been a proponent to cold calling, and I know you know, people say it's a numbers game and everything, but uh, this idea to build relationships and with the relationships that we have to be able to uh, create your business that way, it's just, it's it's typically a lot freer, sometimes no cost, right? Yeah. It's freer that, uh, and it's just, you know, more embracing. I think it's really what our souls want to do is to be able to uplift and help people. And, yeah. and, uh, and so can you tell us a little about alternative cold calling and how you got into this and and uh, and wow. where where all this brilliance of yours came from? <laughs> <laughs> That's very kind. It's very kind. Um, sure, yeah. So I sold real estate at the age of 24. I got my license, um, and I was always a relationship guy. You know, I wasn't a cold caller. I was I was. Um, you know, if you think about the disc profile, yes. Um, three out of those four quadrants aren't wired for cold calling. You know, <laughs> right. so it, somehow in our industry, all the high D's started doing the teaching and the coaching and told all the rest of us to like make cold calls. And the rest of us were like, OK, I guess that's what we're supposed to do to be successful. Right. 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 Yeah. And if I could, like, yeah go if ahead, I go could just say a little on that. Then, yeah. Um, just so, yeah. So basically, and I teach the disc. And for those that don't know, it's the driver and the driver there's about 18 percent of the population are, are uh, drivers and there's the influencers and they're about 28 percent and then the steadies at 40 uh, are 40 uh, percent and then you have about 15 uh, percent or so is the conscientious so yeah, yeah you're talking about the small percentage yeah. and they're out because they're real aggressive and everything they're out yeah. teaching you here's how to do it and you found out that doesn't work for most yeah. of us. Yeah, I just think, like I think that's the thing. Like if we trust ourselves and we listen to our intuition, uh, we know that it doesn't feel good. We're like, this doesn't feel good, and that feeling is the thing that most people, what we, what, what we as people oriented, the I's and the S's, the inspirers, influencers, and the steady stables. That's over sixty percent of the population, based on the numbers you just gave, right? Right. Right. And we're. People oriented people are very team. We're like team players. We're like, hey, how can I support you? What can I do? And so if somebody says you're supposed to cold call, we go, okay, like I guess I'm supposed to do that, <laughs> right? But and so right. what we'll say to ourselves is we'll typically say, oh, I'm supposed to get out of my comfort zone because that's what I'm supposed to do to be successful. And calling people is very uncomfortable, so that must be what I'm supposed to do. Wow. But I don't think that's the application of that statement. I think when we say get out of your comfort zone, you you have to come from who are you? How are you wired? And if you're a people-oriented person, yeah. cold calling people is never going to feel in alignment with who you are. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. So, I love that. And, you know, the feeling, this idea about the feeling that – uh, yeah. I in in my teaching of in which is really my soul's play is to help mm. people become their greatest possibility, and in that that uh, it all really the bottom line is what you're feeling, and if you're feeling good, it's that that means that you're thinking as God, the universe, whatever yeah. is thinking, and when I feel bad, it's it's thinking away from that, and so you're exactly right. This intuition, it's God talking to us, the universe yeah. talking to yeah. us, and so you're right there. Yeah, and so it's all about the uh, intuition and and you know the feeling on that. And so how do I how do I get to know myself? How do I get to understand that? You were talking about uh, you networking and how you really enjoyed networking. Yeah, well, I think uh, depending on where you are in your journey, <clears throat> when I was really young in this career, um, I, all I had to go on was what felt good, what felt right. Um, there, are, uh, I remember there was. Um, there's a guy named Marcus Buckingham who used to work for the Gallup organization, and he did a bunch of books on strengths. 
um, in fact, I think he was just prior to Strengths Finder coming out, he was doing a lot of that type of work. I see. And he defined a strength as something that when you do it, you feel strong. Now, I love that because some people could say, oh, well, I'm good at, I'm, and this is distinct from like what you're good at. You might be good at a lot of things, but not all the things you're good at actually make you feel strong, mm. right? So as an, right. At, in a, as a young adult, all I had to go on was what felt good. And I think that's an awesome. indication of where you can go to work. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it's where you can really do everything. And if people would really, if all of us can embrace that, that it's this idea about that when I feel good, it means I'm on my lighted path. Yeah. You know, it means that. And so I love this idea yeah. about when you feel strong and, you know, that feels good, right? Feeling right. strong. Yeah. I think some people can feel like that's a, uh, they, uh, the, it feels like a guilty pleasure to actually embrace that thought for a minute because you're like, I don't know, like it feels good, that shouldn't be right, like I should do things that feel bad and are out of my comfort zone, <laughs> right? <laughs> well, you know where all that came from too is, is for example, and it, it, you know, and, and most some people get a little embarrassed about this, but it's like, you know, sex feels good, but we're not, you know, we've been all brought up, oh, you know, you're not supposed to do it's bad, <laughs> right, right. you know, whatever. Yeah, yeah. So whatever feels good is bad, and yeah. whatever, you know, yeah. uh, feels bad is good. And so we just yeah. kind of all switched around. We got our wires crossed. Yeah. yeah. So yes. how do I find out my, uh, how do I feel strong? How do I, where do I get, how do I get there? Well, I think I, there's, yeah, that's great. That's great. I mean, I mean, that's my whole journey was just trying to, awesome. uh, um, I call it turning over puzzle pieces. Like in your life, you just start looking for what are the clues that, that life has left you, right? Because you can look back in your life and there are clues about where you, where you produced a result and it felt good yeah. and where you didn't produce a result and it didn't feel good or where you, you didn't, well, you did produce a result, but it didn't feel good. So right. what is your life experience? Look for that. And then I think, I, th I love things like the disc profile, Myers-Briggs, the strength finders, any sort of thing that will give you a look at who you are. And actually yeah. when you read, uh, when I read like the disc profile and what it says about my profile, yeah. I can feel that it feels good when I, I'm like, that's true about me. Right, right. And as you start to um, acknowledge the things that are true about you, mm -hmm. it gives you a place to orient yourself for like, okay, I have to go generate leads if I'm going to generate leads, I should do it in a way that feels like this is a fit, a match between who I am and how I'm going to do it. Oh. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. And so, um, so doing the disc is, you know, one way to do it. And I love this idea about clues too, because yeah. in fact, our angels, and because your last name is angels, <laughs> that all yeah. just ties right in. Yeah. But literally our angels are, if we look at it this way, our angels are leaving us clues all the time. And we might hear it in a musical song. We might hear it from, you know, this yep. uh, us talking right now that it'll all, all of a sudden inspire you. And when you get that inspired feeling and you're feeling good, that just run with it. Don't be yeah. concerned about, well, will the money come or the more right. leads or the business or whatever. Right. So for us real estate agents, how do I use this? Because I think all of us can relate to when I feel good, it's good. And I love being yeah. on that path. And when yeah. I don't do stuff, it, even if I achieve something, it really doesn't feel very good you know it's like yeah. oh god i hope i don't have to do that again and so how do i use that to you know really get clients now so yeah. um you know uh, uh, what is the practical way in order to use that be these beautiful thoughts in order to really be on god's path your lighted path and be able to be successful and abundant yeah. and god, for sure god the universe wants us to be abundant so yeah. how do we Take us to abundance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's such a great question. Um, because if you don't, if we don't answer that pragmatically, then it kind of lives as this very soft, um, esoteric, ethereal type of a thought process. And and right. it's hard, you know, there is this balance between who we're being mm -hmm. and what we're doing in the world. You can't have, if you're just being, then what happens is we don't actually tangibly create in the world. And if we're just doing, then we're creating a bunch of stuff without soul. Right, and yeah. so there's this balance between being and doing. So here's mm -hmm. what I um, have, let's just call it codified. Mm -hmm. here's, here's the way that I teach it. So in real estate, the buying cycle is anywhere from seven to nine years, let's say. People buy a house on average every seven to nine years. Right. That is a very long buying cycle. So if your entire marketing message for seven years is 
look at what I listed, look at what I sold, come to my open house, search all MLS properties. Like if all we ever talk about is real estate, we're irrelevant to our to the majority of our audience for about seven and a half, six and a half to eight and a half years. Right, right. Not relevant. And on top of that, for most of us people-oriented people, the I's and the S's in the world, we don't like talking about real estate anyway. <laughs> this is why the, the number one thing I hear in terms of an agent's challenge in lead generation is consistency. They're not consistent. And I believe they're not consistent, not because of technology, that's a surface issue. What's underneath the surface of all that is yeah. we don't feel good in our skin about the, what we're supposed to say to follow up with people. We feel like we're bothering them, we're yes. interrupting them, we're selling them, spamming them. And if it feels that way, we're not gonna keep doing it. Yes, absolutely. Feels bad, back to it's feeling bad. Right. And yep. That's good, so how, what do I do then? Yep, right, so good. So. I'm trying to, re well, I'm, I'm getting us to like what we have to reverse engineer for. So ultimately uh -huh. what we need is your success in real estate will come down to how many people are in your database. I believe that. If you okay. have, if one agent has a hundred people in their database and another person, another agent has a thousand people in their database, the person with a thousand people in the database will just by numbers do better. Yes. Now, if you're consistent with both, if you're consistent with a hundred people and the other one's consistent with a thousand, the person consistent with a thousand will have more business. It's okay. just the numbers of it. Yep. Even better though is if you had a database of both agents had a thousand people, but one agent has a thousand random people from all walks of life, nothing in common. And so if you have nothing in common, what do you say in your follow up? All, all right. you have, the common denominator in that is you. You're the only thing that ties all these thousand people together. And so all you have to talk about is, guess what? You, and most people don't like to talk about themselves because it sounds self-promoting, right? So the alternative- and most people don't care either, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, they're like, and I know that you don't care, so I don't, then I'm not consistent because I'm like, well, why, you don't care about what my right. stuff is, so. Okay, so the alternative and what we're trying to reverse engineer is consistency. That's the whole point of what I teach. So. In order for you to be consistent and relevant, it would be better to have a database of a thousand people that all have something in common. Yes. This is what I call your tribe. So if you, uh, and this is, this is such a unique perspective in real estate uh, because we're so used to like, I sell real estate, so I should talk about real estate, but that's irrelevant for seven and a half years. So what I teach people to do is you have to find the thing in life you're passionate about. What do you love? What could you talk about every day and not get tired of? And I will get answers like family, um, running, some type of fitness exercise. I will get food. Um, uh, I mean, I've just had like all, my, my dog and animals. I've had all sorts of answers. Sure. And I say that, that topic is what you need to build a tribe around. So your content, your follow-up, who you invite into your database needs to be people that have that in common. Got because it. now, if you're interested, like I have a client uh, in South Carolina who has a, a Facebook page called Dog Owners of Greenville. He has over 5,000 fans on his page who are all in Greenville, who all are dog lovers, dog owners. Wow. Right? Wow. And oh. when you have something passionate like that, you now not only have consistent theme to talk about, yeah. You know how to provide value to your people. Like mm -hmm. if you know that your audiences are dog lovers, then what kind of content you, could you create that would be valuable to them, right? right? Interviews with veterinarians, discounts, uh, restaurant, dog friendly restaurants. Like now we've got a theme and a yeah. theme gives you consistency. And because it's a theme you're passionate about, you never run out of things to say. Yeah, well the funny thing about like the dog subject is that if I post something on Facebook, uh, and it's just me, I'll get, you know, a few likes. I have my dog on Facebook yeah. and, you know. <laughs> yeah, I know, it's It blows funny? up. Yeah. And, and to give someone else, uh, give us another perspective is, I have a guy down in uh, the South Texas, Houston area, and what he th does is he's a foodie. He loves food. Yep. Yep. So all he does, and he has 60,000 followers because he's a foodie. Yep. Right. <laughs> That's so it. I hear you, it, this you works, it. and you can That's build it. your list quickly on that. Yeah.
Yeah. That's exactly it. So we're we were we are reverse engineering a big database of people that have the same thing in common. Why? Because not only will you be consistent, but your people will now engage. Your your thousand people with something in common will engage in your content, and that's what it takes to be top of mind. Yes. Absolutely. You're not top of mind when people tune you out because all you ever talk about is real estate. Right, right, right. And I've heard also that if you talk a lot about real estate, that in addition to tuning you out, it's like, oh, he's he or she is too busy, and oh. so I'm going to go you know, yeah. get somebody else. So it's yeah. really yeah, forfeits. And, and the other thing that you had mentioned earlier, you were talking about, you know, a lot of people just do stuff, do stuff, do stuff. And, uh, and what I call that is what you end up with do-do. <laughs> so that's all. Stop yeah. doing stuff. Yeah. And 99% of yeah. everything that we create is with our, our thoughts. Yeah. Yeah. And if you have good feeling thoughts, which you're yeah. talking about, these good feeling thoughts, yeah. then you'll have inspired action. And the inspired yeah. action is go share the good news on whatever you like with the yeah. world. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And I want to say, like, what this, this uh, thought keeps popping up for me in this conversation, and that sure. is – energy like when when you when you when you speak from the thing that you love and the thing you're passionate about the energy that you exude is attractive people go like hey i like this person and so what happens is you actually end up coming off as confident and uh, and sure of yourself and uh, just people want to be around that yeah. when you when you have to make yourself talk about their your next open house and real estate stuff and you don't like it the energy that comes through is is off-putting right it's blah yeah. <laughs> it's doo-doo it's like right it's, it's absolutely doo -doo. and yeah. you know it's energy and when we understand yeah. that this world really we're all energy like you yeah. know my hand looks like my hand but it really it's it's yeah. more space in there right. and what it is is energy and we can control yeah. this energy with our thought and then we're back to these good feeling thoughts yeah. that will inspire us make us feel confident and start getting yeah. more and more clients and business in a happy way so the other thing that – so I, that, that makes me think of the other thing we're reverse engineering besides consistency, uh -huh. which is the important side of the do piece of it. But on the being side of it is you're reverse engineering confidence and authority because yeah. the content you're – the place you're speaking from is <laughs> authentic. It's in alignment with who you are. And so yeah. you come off as congruent and authentic for people. So your being and your doing now have now are a match. Yes, that's authentic. And I know, Chris, that you're really known for that is, you know, to to help people become authentic and answer yeah. this consistent authenticity. And this is how it is, is authentic is understand what those strengths are, but more understand your passions, right? And, yeah. and things so that yeah. you could just share your passions and that way you exude and you have this good flow and positive energy and yeah. like attracts like. And so you become a magnet and yes. you're in essence helping people to become magnets. <laughs> yes, exactly. Exactly. Well, I mean, like you said, everything's energy. So who we are is who we attract. And if you're being authentically you, then the good news for you is that you're going to attract more of your tribe. And that's when business gets really fun. Like when I ask okay. agents, hey, um, what have been the best transactions you've ever had? Typically what happens is it's some kind of a referral where people are coming into the relationship with trust. Uh, yeah. There's no question. You don't have to prove yourself. And there's some, and, and ultimately there's some sort of like a chemistry yeah. between you and the client. That's the best, best hmm. kind of transaction you could ever have. And so while the internet has been rising and rising in the in our mind of like as important, yeah. what we're forgetting is that as human beings, we're always wired for connection. And so if as much as the internet has come along, I think we've sort of reached the end of that honeymoon phase of technology where we're like, technology this and technology that. And what we're doing as human beings is I believe we're reverting back to how we're wired for centuries, for thousands, for millions, however long it's been. Right. to who we are as a species, which is we're, we're a tribal species. Yes. Wow. We're wired for connection. Technology is just a tool. That is just so powerful, and I, and I love that. You know, I also, um, so growing your business without changing who you are, and really you're going beyond changing who you are to showing people who you are. First of all, understanding who you are and then showing people who you are in that connection and then having that tribe. And I just yeah. love that word tribe too. Yeah, you know, it's me a too. feeling yeah, word. It. 
uh, on that. Um, and so, so once I have that, is do I now start sh like how do I share this good news? And I understand what my passions are, what I enjoy, what I want to share with yeah. other people. I want to build this tribe. And so, where do I go from there, Chris? Yeah. Or I'd rather call you Angel, actually. To talk to all <laughs> Whatever you want. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That's good. Um, so you can go. So um, I like to say that one of the foundational principles there, are, I have four foundational principles to this whole process and actually uh, teach this in a course called Leads You Love. Um, the, the, this is, I'm going to give you the fourth one because this is where it gets very practical. Okay. The fourth foundational principle is funnels. Like you have to have a funnel that moves people from stranger to your to a fan to your database to a client like that is the sales cycle it's just that our sales cycle takes 7 to 9 years and so if you can have that expectation then you're not going to be nervous that you can't cherry pick a lead today right because you understand that this is about relationship so yeah the the question i always get is the question you're asking which is okay well if i talk about dogs or i talk about fitness like how do people know i'm in real estate and I call this backstory, like, um, uh, you know, in an email, you can say, hey, guys, I just, um, I just released my latest episode for my, you know, Fit, at, fit After 40 show. And, um, and uh, it was great. And, and here's, here's some tips and blah, 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 whatever, signed Chris Angel. P.S., um, some of you are thinking about buying or selling in the next six months. And I have, it's, if that's you, like, there are some very important things you need to consider I have a checklist for you. You can get it here. Wow, that's awesome. So uh, I love uh, one of the things. So this is talking email. Is this PS? And there's nothing. You know, I, I I'm uh, know a lot about marketing, if you will, and I know on how powerful that PS is. More people will read the PS than they will the content of your letter. Yeah. And so that PS, and then you're also adding value in that PS yeah. and saying, hey, here's a list. Uh, you yeah. don't do it. So it's a very subtle way to let people know you're yeah. real estate agent without yeah. being in there. Yeah, I, I love the PS because it's not the point of the email. So it doesn't like, it doesn't come off as like off topic, right? If I right. built a tribe around fit after 40 and, and I, my first email is like, here's how to buy a house. Right. And then they're like, wait, what? I'm in this conversation because we're talking about fitness. But it, the weird thing is that I can put that, that call to action for real estate stuff in the postscript yeah. in the PS and it actually doesn't come off as weird. Right, right, right. That's yeah, just another uh, value. You're just throwing another value in there. Hey, by the right. way, if you have this, you right. know, here's a value. So that's how to do it on email. And so yeah. with the, like, I'm curious about, like, for myself with Facebook, like I say, man, my dog gets all these likes. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. I, I, I got I, I to gotta pay people to like my Yeah. <laughs> so, so what do I do to, um, it, it, can I use the same strategy in Facebook? And if so how would I do that? Yeah, it really depends on the tribe you've built on Facebook. So for example, my, uh, my client in Greenville who has um, the dog owners of Greenville page. Yeah. So for example, his um, topic of dog ownership is connected to actually owning a home. Like if you had a home with a fenced yard and some stuff, like he, he, what he's done is he's actually ran some ads to his fans that says, hey, are you looking to buy a house with a fence, like a fenced yard? And he'll actually go into his MLS and create a very specific list of homes in Greenville with fenced yards. And he'll actually run that ad to a landing page where they can opt in for that list. Wow. So he's actually great. getting leads, right, for people that want a fenced yard. Yeah. Wow. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I've never heard that one. Never, never yeah. heard it. It's, you know, but that search. doesn't. That doesn't yeah. work for all topics. Like if, I, if we're talking fit after 40 and I say, hey, are you trying to be more fit? Do you want a home gym? Here are all the homes on the MLS that could have a home gym. Like that just kind of yeah. breaks down a little bit. It's not quite the right, same thing, right? Right, right, right. So it really depends on your tribe, uh, what your topic is. But, um, but here's what I recommend. Um, so for example, I have a guy that does, um, let's see, one of my clients is in Camarillo, California. His page is called Loving Life in Camarillo. Oh. And his whole thing was about how do we help people move from being overwhelmed to loving life. So his theme really was, I want to find other people who have this passion for wanting the most out of life. And one of the things I told him to do was start running a live, loving life in Camarillo home of the week and just go on Facebook, just go tour a home that feels inspiring to you and put that on your Facebook page. That's super simple. 
it, it's thematic with loving life, but you're also bringing real estate and backstory into this conversation. Oh, that's fantastic. Brilliant, right. brilliant. And I just love this whole idea about loving life too, and yeah. and you know, and, and connecting with people and a tribe yeah. and doing what yeah. you want. And, yeah. And uh, you know, and, and this this PS and in, in order to do it, that it's just all fun. Um, any other uh, ideas on how to like how could I get? It, because I know I have some agents out there that are saying. You know, I really need, I mean, you know, that sounds good in seven years, but of course, all those people are in different stages of that seven years. Or, right. you know, a person that, yeah. you know, next month, this week wants to do it. So, yeah. uh, so that gives us, you know, comfort to know, hey, we could get some right away. But any techniques to connect with my tribe and to get business right away? So let's say we have an agent say, hey, I'm going to go do this. And that is, are there some techniques in order to help? Uh, agents to with the expectations it's long term, but yeah. how can I get some leads short term? Yeah, yeah. Well, I just I will always just say that the majority of your leads are going to be long term leads. Like if your expectation yeah. in real estate is that the majority of your leads are now leads, then you're going to be sorely disappointed by the results you produce. Yes. That being right. said, if you want short term leads, it is always and I hate to say this, but you just need to embrace this. It's always going to come back to prospecting. Like you just have to. Talk to people. Yes. Yeah. I don't care. Like, unless you are committed to go all in on mastering advertising, mastering Facebook ads, or buying Zillow leads or buying Realtor.com leads, right? right? And getting really good at how you convert those leads so that they yeah. trust you and they don't like avoid you, which is really what actually happens most of the time. Right. If you're not willing <laughs> to commit to the process of mastery in that, then you're going to have to go talk to people. Yeah. And, yeah. The question becomes, well, how do I talk to people? Because now we're back to where we started this whole conversation, which is, well, I don't like cold calling. I don't want to bother people. Right. And I think for people-oriented people, people yeah. it just comes down to having a couple questions in your back pocket. So I teach eight questions that um, I feel are very natural, very really. I'll give them to you right here on this call. Cool. But, but, I, but before I give them to you, what I want to say is this, like, I've given these, I've had, these have been online for free for years. And the thing is yeah. like, I can give them to you and if you don't use them, they don't work. Exactly, yeah. So people, so what, what's funny is, and I, you know, I'm trying to create a little conviction here. People will say, well, but Chris, I want immediate leads. And I'm like, okay, well, you gotta talk to people. Well, but what do I say? Okay, well, I'll give you the eight questions to say. And they're like, okay, great. And then they don't take action, so. <laughs> yeah, I hear you, but okay. yeah, okay. yeah. And, and so for all of us to say, you know what, that, I want it the easier way, and 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 it, you know it, it kind of plays out this way. Here we are, and God knows where we are, where we want to go, and yeah. it's downhill, and it's the path of least resistance. So what you're really sharing with us is God's path, the path of least resistance to get to our goals. And so now we're going to take Chris Angel's questions, and we're going to start asking them. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> And the more people you ask these questions to, the more chances you have of uncovering a lead, right? Awesome. Okay. Awesome. So here are the eight questions. The first question is, well, where do you live? You're like, oh, well, I live in Dallas. And I say, that's great. Like, how long have you lived there? That's question number two. How long have you lived there? Uh -huh. Oh, well, we've been here about seven years. Seven years? That's amazing. Like, where did you live before that? Question three is, where did you live before that? Like, oh, well, we, we, we used to live in Austin. Oh, wow, Austin, wow, that's great. Why did you move? Right, so let's recap so far. So we've got, yep. where do you live? How long have you lived here? Where did you live before that? Why'd you move? Got it. Okay, good. Question number five, uh, what do you like about where you live in Dallas? Okay. So you say, oh, yeah, we're in Dallas, so what do you like about that? Great. What don't you like about where you live? That's question number six. Everybody, listen, the weird thing about it is like, as soon as people buy a house and have been there for six months, they're already thinking about what's not complete about where they live and they want the next thing, right? So, right, right. Um, that's how we are. That's how we are as human beings is 
yeah. once you, you know, we have, a, 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 and I always share with people like, you know, you want a million dollars. Once you get a million dollars, I'm telling you, you're going to be yeah. after the two million. You know? yeah. Right. <laughs> it's who but we I, are. We're, we're made to have birth desires. Yes. So it's cool. Yes. Yeah. It's perfect. Yeah. I think, I think I love that. I love where you come from because I agree. I think like you get that as humans, we're wired to expand. Like it's all yeah. like, that's just our state as a spirit, as a soul. It's like, we're always expanding. Yeah. Wow. So what don't you like about where you live? Yeah. Is question yeah, number right. six. Yeah. Question seven is where the lead shows up. Okay, question seven is, if you could live anywhere in Dallas, where would you live? Now, originally when I taught this, I'd say, okay, ask if, if you could live anywhere, where would you live? And people would say some exotic place that was unrealistic. And I'm like, okay, well, so <laughs> just say, if you could live anywhere in Dallas, <laughs> where would you live? Yeah. And if you ask that question of 10 people, I'm guessing half of them will say, I, I love where I live, where I live is perfect, blah, 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 right? They, they don't want to give concede that they don't want to live where they live now. But <laughs> the other five, I, out of the other five, I bet three of them would say some other place and two of them might actually be serious about something. Wow. So out of 10 conversations a day, I bet two people actually would want to live somewhere else and they're serious about it. Wow. That's, that's good numbers. Yep. Because you were that's talking 20 Zillow. That's 20% conversion. Right, right. And you know, Zillow is one out of 100. So yeah. what do you want? One out of five or one out right. of 100? <laughs> right, yes. So question eight, here's question eight. And question eight is, um, you say, oh, well, we'd love to live in this this, place, this part. And I say, well, that's, that's amazing. Like, why haven't you done that yet? Question eight is, why haven't you done that yet? Or some variation of that that feels good to you. What, what I'm trying to figure out is, you have this dream of where you want to be. Like, that's amazing. And what I'm trying to figure out is, why haven't you done that yet? <laughs> right? And that typically will give you their objection. And the objection is going to be, you know, either time or money, typically. Right? Yeah. We had a bankruptcy. We're waiting for the kids to get out of school. Uh, we don't know if we can afford. But out of the number of questions that the people you ask, yeah. there will be a certain percent who actually – just didn't know where to start or are ready, like they're just ready to go. Yeah, yeah, fabulous. And fabulous. those that aren't ready to go, because again, most of your leads are gonna be future leads, those that aren't ready to go, you at least now, as a helpful people-oriented person, know how to come alongside of them, like say, let's say they had a bankruptcy, and nurture that relationship and help them get back financially where they need to be to buy. Absolutely, and you know, the other thing is, is that people, so, you know, it might have been two years ago, let's say the bankruptcy, use that as an example, that two years ago it's the bankruptcy. So they're still stuck in why they think they can't do it. Yeah. When really, I think it's like 18 months or something, you could get a mortgage after bankruptcy. You know, there's just an example yep. right there for you that, and I remember I was in some class in, in real estate and they were saying, how disgusting these people that declare bankruptcy, you know, you got back into a house in a year and a half. And I'm thinking like, well, why, why is it disgusting? You know, I mean, I don't know why they declare bankruptcy. You know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, but the fact is that you actually are helping them to realize their dream. Yeah. because they're thinking about wow you know because really some of those dreams they've had um i i i, I like saying that you know most of us our dream machine hasn't been working for a long oh, yeah, time that's good, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> and so hey why don't we so what you are is you're the restarter of the dream machine you know, you're that. starting those dreams yeah. up again, because really people would love to be move into this other place, but they're stuck in their old beliefs of the old situation or whatever. And the fact is, you'd really be doing, have anything you want. There's nothing in our way other than our own thoughts. And so, so you're good. helping them. Yeah. yeah. I, it, there's a saying, um, uh, I'll tell people like, look, the, your, the way you make money and your platform for influence are not the same thing. Yeah. Right, like your platform for influence comes from your message, your soul. It's your important work in the world. It's your life's yes. work in the world. That's your platform for influence. How you make money is you sell houses. Yeah. Right. right. And, and what happens is we collapse the two and we think that, oh, my platform for influence is real estate. So what I should go out to the world and broadcast about is real estate. But the problem is that doesn't inspire. Right. If what you're what you're pointing to right now is perfect because what I wish for every real estate agent is to find their important work in what they do and stop talking about real estate, but you could start talking about reigniting people's dreams. 
yeah. Home ownership is a part of that, but it is not the whole thing. So if you as an agent could relate to people like channel your inner Tony Robbins, and when you get to question eight, you're like, listen, your life sounds incredible. Why are you not taking action? Like that is your important work in the world. Yeah. And selling the house is a byproduct of that, right? Chris, you are on it, man. Woo. You are on it. Let's go, Ed. Let's go. You're channeling Tony right now. Yeah. Yeah. I love that, that yeah. analogy too. Yeah, you know, start yeah. doing it. So yeah, the, the uh, and, and so you're basically taking dreams, you know, and you're helping people to reignite those those dreams and yeah. and to really help them think because again, they get stuck in the kind of mud, if you will, and yeah. what we can do is help lift them up. And that feeling is better than, yeah. no matter how much a check is, that that feeling is better yeah. than that check. And we're all yeah. doing this to feel good. Whatever it is, we're doing it to feel good. And you just went to the summit, you know, you just went to the top where, yeah. man, I feel so good, they feel so good. And then you also get a bigger house or, you know, more money, bigger commission, whatever the case yes. be. Yeah. <laughs> and that's that back to that being and the doing, right? Like there's a, yeah. and so I, I think this is a good kind of way to sort of um, bring this to a, uh, maybe a call to action for a listener, right? Like, which is you can't lead people. You can't channel your inner Tony Robbins and challenge them to live into their dreams. If you're not challenge yourself to live into your dreams. Wow. And I think a lot of times what happens is as an entrepreneur or a business owner, having a, a real estate business, what happens is the journey just beats you up. Yeah, yeah. It just does. And at some point it becomes a grind and you've lost your way. You've lost your inspiration and in why you're doing this. And it becomes all about marketing and open houses and doo-doos, right? Versus <laughs> finding like what this is about for you. And if you, if this, if real estate, if you can't find your important work in real estate, then this is going to turn into one long slog through trying to right. sell a house after a house after another house and you're going to hate your life <laughs> right because you've right. lost what it means for you yeah wow that's just so powerful and that's great so how can uh we connect with you then chris in order to get more of this you know how sure. can you because I know agents are out there saying, hey, I do want to connect with myself. I do want to connect with my dreams. I yeah. want to help other people to realize their dreams. Yeah. And you can help them do that. So how, how do we get a hold of you? Yeah, well, there's uh, there are a couple of resources. One, um, if you go to leadsyoulove, leadsyoulove.com, um, it'll take you to a landing page where you'll see um, a course I have, I, I have uh, as well as a, um, a free download, uh, like a blueprint. Yeah. Um, awesome. And then... Um, I have a podcast on iTunes called Leads You Love, and you can oh. go listen to that. It kind of dives more into this perspective and, and thought process. And, yeah. and yeah. obviously, you can always find me on Facebook and message me there if you want anything specific or custom. Yeah, that, that's just fantastic. You know, I also saw that, um, like you have with, uh, and maybe one more subject, and it's kind of around what we've been talking about, but, um, you know, connecting with people authentically, but publishing content on your passions and interests. And yeah. so I know we've touched on that, you know, talked about that, but you have some, um, you know, some thoughts behind uh, publishing content. I've had. When I first read that, uh, you know, about you, and that's one of your expertise, I was thinking about, well, I'm a, I have a publisher and I, you know, write books, but I think you're maybe saying, you know, something different, not just, you know, write, writing books, but, you know, the Facebook things, the videos, you know, the emails, whatever, but yeah. other thoughts do you have on that? Yeah. Um, so we cover that a lot in the Leads You Love yeah. program, of course, okay. um, but from a from a uh, real bottom line approach to it, I, I like to, um, uh, I, su I suggest or recommend what I call pillar content. Okay. Uh, so have a weekly show. I really like shows like this yeah. because a show is, it's easier to produce than, uh, it's, it's, the energy's easier too. Yeah. Most right. people don't feel good staring into a camera. Right. So when you have an interview show, uh -huh. it's a lot easier to create your content. And if you're an agent, what I'd recommend is go in. I always have clients go interview local businesses. So that becomes a weekly show for you. And your show is the name of whatever your tribe is. So like dog owners of Greenville, that's the name of a show, right? Wow. Loving life in Camarillo. That's the name of the show. It's also the name of the page. It's also his website. So now you go out and loving life in Camarillo is interviewing businesses in the community as a way to introduce the community to itself. 
Wow. Plus, it's networking baked in, right? Like you're networking right. with other connected businesses. You could interview the mayor. You could interview city council people, highly connected businesses. But have yeah. a show that you do every week, once a week, yeah. about a topic you're passionate about, and this helps you publish mm -hmm. your message and your important work in the world. Great, great. So show, let's be practical again on – so am I taking my iPhone and am I recording yep. that or am I doing, uh, you know, um, Zoom or, or how, am I, how am I doing this? this? Yeah. yeah, well, you could, if you do it, uh, if you're not going to do online interviews, if you do online interviews, I use Zoom. I like Zoom for that. Um, but okay. if you're local, uh -huh. um, the only benefit of doing Zoom locally is that it's, there's some efficiency to I don't have to drive somewhere. Yeah. Uh, but the downside is, you know, if there's a tech learning curve on their side, on your guest side, and they're trying to like, I can't find the link, or how do I make my sound come on? <laughs> yeah. Then that could be a challenge. But um, it's just good to get out. If you're going out um, yeah. off, uh, offline, I just use my – your phones are so good. The only thing you need um, to add to the phone is an external microphone. Okay. okay. And you can go on Amazon, and for like 12 bucks to 20 bucks, you can find what's called a dual lapel mic. So there's wow. two mics. There's one jack, one input that plugs into your phone, but two mics. So you clip one on your guest, one on yourself, and you just set your phone up on a tripod and you just hit record and oh off you go. Gosh. That's yeah. fantastic. And so for twelve bucks and, and they're they're wireless then? It's the, it's um, wired. It's probably got like a any wired. six six to twelve foot cable. Oh so my gosh. <laughs> this is on your tripod, the line comes out and it connects to you and Wow, that's fantastic. Well, that's yeah. a great technique. And, you know, this whole idea then of video, so now we're getting into a whole new world, is that video is becoming the preferred choice. and People yeah. want to you know, watch this. And so now you're saying, and uh, would you do that on Facebook Live then? Is that uh, where? Well, where you could. I, I yeah. like to do mine pre-recorded so that I can brand it. I like to put my name or my brand on as an overlay on the video. Okay. I think that's just smart branding. Okay. I also think it makes it your guest at ease and you at ease because you know you can edit if yeah. you need to or want to. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so for us, for everybody to know, we haven't edited anything out of this other than Chris uh, lost them. We couldn't hear him right, for right. a couple of minutes. But right, right. Than that, this is all fresh, baby. Yeah. This is all authentic. This that's is the, the angel and the anchor yeah. talking here. <laughs> nice. Well, that's what's so great about interviews is they're very flexible and forgiving. Yes. You can have ums and ahs. You can even mess up, but but people understand that in the context of an interview. So yeah, yeah, and uh, and then the other thing is is this being authentic is you know this isn't like we got to be perfect. You know yeah. that your your perfection is when you just are who you are, and it doesn't yeah. matter about doing ahs or ums or whatever that yep. you know. And it's really back to this energy because depending on yeah. how you are and how confident you feel and where your energy is, and yeah. um, uh, that you know. In fact, I help uh, with on the dockhankwebinar.com is a great place for people to agents to be able to go and have that freer, enricher life. And so it's a great one uh, yeah. to be able to you know uplift people and give them other options. And so uh, with that, just in closing that, uh, any other words of, of uh, love and, and just great mm -hmm. things? Like I, I like love, leads you love, you know, that word yeah. love, I, 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 you know, there's just, it, it's so powerful and, and so impactful. It tells me a lot about you too, Chris. It tells yeah. the audience, you know, about that. But uh, any, any closing comments that you'd like to share with us, a bits of wisdom, whatever, that you'd like to uh, share with us, my angel? <laughs> yes. Thank you. Yes. Uh, well, I would say this. I think um, real estate can be a tough gig. Um, and so you have to find your important work in the world. You have to find, you have to bring what's what the message that matters to you. You want to spread goodwill in the world, and everybody has their unique flavor of what that is. But you have to find that for yourself. And once you do, build a tribe around that because then work doesn't feel like work, right? And people yeah. actually appreciate your content instead of resisting it. Absolutely. Wow. That's just so powerful. And I thank you so much, Chris, for, again, Chris Angel for being on the show today. He, he has these leads you love, you know, and he teaches you how to really find yourself and how to be able to go out. And as I call it, that, you know, really nothing has to be work, right, Chris? And we can yeah. have fun. 
and yeah. and you're you're giving us ideas and you yeah. have a path for us to have fun and at the same time i can guarantee you you're going to be far more successful you'll have more money you'll have more business all of that when you do find your passion share that yeah. passion and then just dovetail in that real estate a little because that's also another wonderful thing where we help people have their dreams come true i'm into that Okay. Amen to that. <laughs> all right. Okay, Chris, thank you so much. We appreciate you. And for all of you watching today, that it's just been an amazing time again, and that I want you to have a freer and richer life. And here are the thoughts and the ideas. Do that on Agent Wealth Network. And so to all of you, Chris and I say, we love you. Thanks for watching. All the best. Bye bye.